Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to take a look at today is VMware alternatives. So uh, if you're a VMware customer, you probably know that Broadcom bought VMware. Even if you're not a VMware customer, you probably have heard that this has happened. There's been a couple couple things. First of all, Broad came in, Broadcom, once the acquisition was complete, they laid off a bunch of really talented folks. That's unfortunately how businesses and acquisitions uh, work sometimes. And then uh, there's been licensing uh, changes, right? So there's no longer perpetual licensing with VMware. As a VCP, uh, some of these things, so I'm a VMware certified professional, some of these things uh, kind of, I, I'm like, man, that's, it is what it is, right? But uh, there has been a, a lot of questions come through the channel about what are our alternatives. So I will be switching hypervisors here at, uh, at home in the lab. Now, real quick before we get to that, you've got to realize that there are type 1 hypervisors and type 2 hypervisors. And a type 1 hypervisor is installed on the bare metal. And a type two hy hypervisor is nested inside of the the operating system, right? So like the type one is like the ESXi, the uh, uh, the Hyper V, those things, right? Um, and then type two would be like VMware Workstation or Oracle uh, Virtual Box, Parallels software like that. So you could do this depending on how you want to do it. I actually had somebody. Uh, that we worked with that was running um, the Oracle um, virtualization, the the type two, but they were running it headless on a Linux server. And uh, I had never run into that. And it was, they were managing it. Um, it was absolutely amazing to see them do that because it was, it was installed on Linux. And I was just like, this is virtual box headless. And they're like, yeah, it's awesome. So <clears throat> then we started experimenting with it and you could do it on windows and things like that. It was, it was pretty cool, but let's, uh, let's take a look at these and, uh, let me do know down in the comments, which hypervisor you're uh, on. If you're moving, if you're a VMware customer and you're moving, let me know that. Um, uh, and let me know whether you run type one hypervisors, type two, what you run. Um, some of these that we're going to be presenting could be a mixed bag, but I, uh, here is my uh, single host that I have with just a couple VMs. And you can see, yes, it is VMware uh, ESX 6.5. So it is time to do something with this uh, because we are up to 8 and uh, 6.5 probably. I don't know if, if it's getting any free support anymore or not uh, upgrades. Um, so this, like I said, this was the, uh, if, if this uh, evaluation goes past the 35 days it goes into the free mode and all that good stuff so you'll have to let me know if you're running this as well so number one hyper v server 2019 get started for free so you when you think about microsoft you don't often think about free right but you can get uh, right here it says microsoft hyper v server is a free product now, whether you have to buy server licensing, other than that, that's going to be a question you're going to have to talk to your Microsoft rep about. So uh, we are familiar with Hyper-V. Uh, we have a few customers with Hyper-V, and we we do uh, support that. I thought about installing this and seeing how I get along with it on a day-to-day. -day. The networking for me on Hyper-V, uh, it's, a, it's a little clunky. Like if you came from ESX, um, the networking on Hyper-V for me, that's where it's it's a little clunky. But let me know if you're running Hyper-V. The next thing I've thought about doing is just running KVM on a straight-up Ubuntu machine. Now, there's going to be some arguments, <clears throat> I'm sure, that people think that KVM is a Type 2 hypervisor when it is actually a Type 1 hypervisor. It's built into the Linux kernel. So what I'm thinking about doing possibly is just doing an Ubuntu machine and uh, managing this with Copilot. 
So uh, there's actually also, I think, a virtual min or a web min uh, module to manage this. So I thought about doing that as well. This may be the route that I go. If any of you are just doing straight up Ubuntu with KVM, let me know down in the comments how you're managing it and how you like. Uh, Proxmox, we are very, very familiar with, have several customers running this. I've looked at running this uh, at scale. It's another one that I'm, I'm kind of teetering on. If you're running Proxmox, let me know. Once again, sometimes there's going to be, you know, that argument whether it's type 1 or type 2. XCPNG, I also have customers that are running this. This, besides Citrix Zen, looks and feels the most like uh, VMware's ESXi. I have run this. I'm, th I'm thinking about it. Again, I'm thinking about it. Let me know if you're running this down in the comments. And, of course, there's Citrix. Who can for forget Citrix? You've got straight up Zen server. Um, and there's an open source. You know, there's the open source per portion of this. Uh, and then, of course, I think Citrix and, and Zen have some sort of relationship. So I'm, I'm thinking about this. As well, we'll have to see. I, I'm going to see what people are saying down in the comments, but I definitely have to do something. I have to move my ESX host, whether it's to a free version of a later, or if I dump it completely, which I'm thinking about really dumping it completely. And then the last solution that I wanted to look at was Harvester, which is from SUS, and it's definitely an an interesting piece of software. It's a According to them, Harvester is a modern hyper-converged infrastructure solution, solution blah, 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 built for bare metal servers using enterprise-grade open source technologies, including Kubernetes, Qbert, and Longhorn. So you can do not only VMs with this, but you can also do containers. I tried to install this the other day, but I tried to install it inside of another uh, hypervisor, in fact, a type two hypervisor, which is VirtualBox. The installation did not go as well as I wanted. So I think that I do need to just deploy it on straight up hardware and see what happens. If anybody's running this, let me know. These are kind of my choices. If there are other choices, other selections you think I should be looking at, as you can tell from this conversation, I'm definitely leaning in a, in a couple directions but I have to do it because I've got a few servers that I need to get set up and going, and I don't want to get everything in my ESXi 6.5 because that is going away one way or another. So let me know down in the comments if I missed anything, and if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think about the VMware acquisition. Let me know what you're running for hypervisors. Let me know if you prefer type one or type two down in the comments. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment, share. Please follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below, along with affiliate links if you'd like to support the channel and a Patreon link. And as always, if you need IT consulting, if you have hypervisors you need help with, if you're going to migrate away from VMware and you need help, reach out at willyhow.com. There's a contact form right there on the front page. We'll help you out. And of course, uh, we can help you with a plethora of other IT stuff. And if we can't help you, we'll get you to someone who can. That's our promise to you. Once again, I'm Willie. The saga with VMware goes on. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.